my flower friends! So in this video, I'm going to be talking about how to get over your self-harm scars or how to be more confident in your skin, etc, etc. So, um, quick disclaimer, this is a one-take video again as well too, so if I mess up or if I take a long time to reply, you know why. I've also got some bullet points here because this is a very serious topic and I want to make sure that I give as much advice for you guys as I possibly can, so that's why I've written some things down. So if I space out and I look at the bottom, it's because I'm looking at the sheet so I know what I should be talking about. So, um, first of all, this video is made for people who are in the end stages of recovery with this addiction called self-harm. Um, so if you want more information on how to actually get start the process of getting over this addiction i have a lot of videos on my channel so i will be leaving a card of a playlist of videos where you can find videos such as how i stop self-harming um how i tell my how to tell your parents you're self-harming you know how to react to self-harm in public etc etc um so do check that out as you guys know i have had problems with self-harm in the past i am one year clean so i have and actually self-harm in over a year and you guys have watched my entire journey of my recovery on the internet I have documented my entire recovery on the internet um, so you guys know how serious of an issue this is and how much I want to change the world about self-harm and the stigmas about it but anyways um, so a lot of people will ask me you know why do you show your scars and I find that my best response I can give them is I show my scars so that others can heal. And I think that's a great response. If any of you guys ever get asked the question, why do you show your scars? Just say, I show my scars so others know that they can heal. And it's true, but to be entirely honest, being clean from this addiction for so long, I don't actually notice my scars. I can look at my legs, my ankles, my shoulders, my wrists, and I'll see scars, but I don't notice them or see them as scars. I just see, like, my skin. And same with my um, boyfriend. You know, if he looks at my body and skin, he just sees me. He doesn't see my scars. He sees me and my story. Um, so, yeah, I, I guess that a lot of self-harmers feel very, very different, and I just want to tell you guys that, you know, I feel super different as well, too. If you feel so different, like an outcast, it is the universe telling you that you were born to stand out. You feeling different is the universe telling you that you were born to stand out. So stand out and make a difference. Um, that's completely kind of off topic, but, um... So let me just come up with the first tip right now. So the first tip on how to be comfortable with your self-harm scars is to take care of your skin. The more effort you put into taking care of your skin, moisturizing, I use coconut oil to moisturize, um, you know, really rubbing it into your skin, um, not only will it help your scars heal better, um, feel better, but you're also putting love and positive energy back into yourself by, you know, just rubbing your wrist with oil. And it's just kind of like petting yourself and being like, dude, like, you're over this. This is fine. Like, you got to learn to love yourself. Um, and so make sure that you do take care of yourself. The second um, thing that I put down is... Um, let others know what you've been through. You know, you can't heal what you never reveal. And in any, you know, addiction class that you go to or whatever meeting you go to, they will say that the number one thing to get over addiction is to be aware of your addiction. But um, also, you know, you have to be able to tell yourself that like, hey, like, this is not something that I'm going to ever do again but this is something that I went through. This is my story. And you should never, ever, ever be ashamed of your story because your story will inspire other people to heal. Share your story because that will inspire other people to heal. And yeah, let me get to the third point. So the third point is don't wallow in self-pity. And I have been this kind of person before in the past where I just 
dug myself in this self-pity hole and I just kept saying to myself, you're worthless, you're stupid, how can you be so dumb that when you're sad you have to, you know, cut yourself, like, you're never gonna fall in love, you're gonna die alone, and that is so counterproductive, like, that's not going to work for you, and I actually wrote down this quote that says, self-pity is easily the most destructive of non-pharmaceutical narcotics. It is addictive, gives momentary pleasure, and separates the victim from reality. And I think that's very, very true. I think we all have the power to either be bitter about it or to be better. And I'm sure you guys know that we should be doing better instead of being bitter, you know? If you just keep saying to yourself, like, I deserve this, I've, I'm never gonna go anywhere in life, just know that your words, you will manifest. If you keep saying those things, you're going to bring it into existence and even thinking those things you got to be careful with your thoughts catch yourself in those thoughts when your thoughts are like you're never gonna find someone who's gonna accept you for your scars or whatever catch yourself and be like dude why the fuck did i just think that like that is the most like stupid thing i've ever thought of like that's not true that is totally not true and i know it can be really hard to um, catch yourself being in a stuck in this like self pity hole, but you also got to remember that a lot of the most a lot of really toxic friends are friends who are just you know always self pitying themselves because it really does separate the victim from reality and it is very destructive because it gives them momentary pleasure like they said and separates them and. A lot of the toxic friends I had, they just would stay in this pit of self-pity and it rubs off onto other people and you don't want that to rub off onto your friends. And um, just like I said, you have the choice to be bitter or better. So be better um, and catch yourself when you're in that negative mindset and try to change it into a more positive one which is hard and takes a lot of practice and if you want more help on that i'm happy to make a video about how to change your negative thoughts into positive thoughts i will be very happy to make that video if you guys want to see it let me know in the comments below um number four don't photoshop your scars out now um I'll, this is very controversial so some of you guys may think what or some of you guys may want to photoshop your scars out so take this tip very lightly but in my personal opinion i don't think that helping i th i don't think that hiding yourself is going to help you accept yourself um hiding all these things under the rug isn't going to help you accept yourself you know if you have self-harm on your wrist and you put concealer over it and you've been doing that for a month and then you go to the beach one day with your friends and it rubs off and your friends can see oh hey maybe my friend's a little bit insecure because she's trying to hide something i feel like she's wearing a mask i feel like she's trying to hide um or you know on instagram if you have a photo of your legs and you photoshop your scars out um, you know, when so one Instagram friend meets you in public, they're like, hmm, like, that's different. I, I didn't know that you actually had, like, self-harm scars because in all your photos, it, it actually ends up sparking a conversation when most people who have scars, they don't even want to be in that conversation. Um, and the, the reason I guess I would say this as a suggestion is that, like, the past suggestion like you have to, to in order to heal you have to reveal and I think that if you just mask it like you're not really your true self like hiding it you know if you're not showing it on social media you're not inspiring others with your story you're not showing people your battle scars you're not showing people that they can heal and I think that you have an opportunity to make people feel less alone and instead you're hiding yourself and sweeping your issues under the rug and um speaking of sweeping your issues under the rug um number five is to change your focus so even though you know i mean okay let me let me start this point again so 
you know, if you're uncomfortable with your mouth shape or your nose shape, then something that makeup gru gurus or girls like to do is to add sparkles on their eyeshadow, nice eyeliner, eyebrows. You know, if you if you have um, you know scars on your shoulders, like I've got some scars on my shoulders, then you might get nice voluminous hair so that when people see you, they're not like, oh, what's that on your shoulder? They're like, wow, look at that hair. Um, and for example, I have um, scars on my wrist, but I also have tattoos on my wrist. So this tattoo is a incomplete circle, and it is my favorite tattoo because it start it sparks up a conversation. Most of the time, people will be like, "Did your tattoo artist fuck that up?" And I'll be like, "Oh, actually, um, I got this intentionally, and it means that I may look perfect up far." afar but i'm imperfect up close and i'm actually odd i'm odd i'm different um and that's okay and so that sparks a conversation because art isn't meant to be liked it's not supposed to be liked or hated it's supposed to start a conversation um you know like when you see like um paintings and there's just like one stroke and people are like i could do that i could do that art but i'm like dude you're talking about it you're the all the pieces in this gallery you haven't talked about but this brush stroke that you could so do like you haven't done it first of all and second of all you're talking about it so actually it is art so um that's kind of like with this you know it's like i draw the attention away from my scars up here by having something to talk about up here and obviously tattoos are very expensive and it's not you know the best solution or whatever but um Another thing that could be a little bit contradictory from my last point, which is don't conceal your scars, is that I actually got this tattoo because I had scars throughout my arm here. And in real life, you can see my scars. Um, you obviously can't see on camera. You can feel them. They're still there, but my focus isn't them anymore. Like, I would look at my arms before and I would be like, wow, like, I can't believe I did this. I was so stupid as a kid. Like... I can't believe I used to be so depressed that I would get to the point of slicing my skin with a razor. And I wanted to stop thinking those thoughts, so I started to shift my focus onto this tattoo that I got that I was like, wow, it's just, you know, a nice tattoo. Um, but anyone who likes has seen it in close, they can see the scars underneath it. And that can also tell a story. Um, and the last point I have, number six, is to share your story. So you don't need to necessarily share it online. You can just share it with your friends. But I was on Facebook the other day and I saw this post from a friend of a friend and she posted her struggles with an eating disorder. And it was a long paragraph and it was like, I want to get healthy. I want to be better. I am in the road to recovery. And it really inspired me not only had i had a phase of eating disorders when i was younger but um it made me connect to her better it made me feel less alone and it made me feel like proud of her i respected her more and honestly when you share your story you are helping people feel less alone helping people feel connected and that is the most beautiful thing about it you know getting over an addiction and learning how to love yourself is fucking difficult and the fact of of the matter is that everyone has their own addictions and everyone has things that they're uncomfortable about their themselves and everyone has their own demons to fight and sharing your story helps people feel less alone because they're like you know what i've had addictions i've had problems with my self-image etc etc and you know what i'm not the only one and um i i found that sharing mine on the internet my story on the internet helped me a lot to connect to other people but um you don't need to do it online you can honestly open up a group chat with your friends and just be like oh like hey guys like i know this is a very serious issue but i want to be honest with you guys because you will actually be really surprised how many people share the same issues as you. You will be surprised with how many people have gone through the same things as you, and you will be doing the world justice by making everyone feel less alone. Now, I'm running out of space, but I just wanna wrap this up. I hope that I had a clear um, message for you guys. Um, I shall 
go over all the um points in the description below if you want to read them one by one and uh i really want to help that you guys focus on yourself focus on getting better focus on your confidence and your self-worth is so important like you are worthy of anything and i hope there are more days in your lifetime where you enjoy being alive and um for everyone who has survived 2017 and the past couple years has survived their addiction has survived their mental illnesses congratulations and i'm very 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 proud of all of you once again i have more videos up here with self-harm if you guys are still going through that um and i hope this video was somehow enlightening for you if you have a friend who is going through this and they're trying to be comfortable in their skin then definitely send this video to them it might help them and it might open up a conversation between you and them and uh love you guys all so much hope you hope hope you guys have an awesome fucking day bye <sighs>